what do you see in this illustration it looks like two of these lymphocytes have been crushed isn't it what are these cells yes these cells are smudge cells these are one of the classical clues for one of the most common leukemias in adults yes that is chronic lymphocytic leukemia today we will be learning about chronic lymphocytic leukemia hello everyone myself dr vijay shankar welcome back to this short tutorial from pathology made simple at ilopathology.com in the next 10 minutes let's learn about the epidemiology the pathogenesis morphology clinical features and a bit about treatment and prognosis of chronic lymphocytic leukemia now what is chronic lymphocytic leukemia if you recollect the classification what we had discussed in my earlier session on classification of lymphoid neoplasms chronic lymphocytic leukemia falls under peripheral b cell neoplasm right so that's a peripheral b cell neoplasm which is the most common leukemia of adults in the western world there are two terminologies chronic lymphocytic leukemia and small lymphocytic lymphoma are these two same basically they differ only in the degree of peripheral blood lymphocytosis whereas in the case of chronic lymphocytic leukemia the absolute lymphocyte count is more than 5000 per mm cube right so in sll is basically a neoplasm of the lymph nodes it is a non hodgkin lymphoma where you don't see that peripheral blood absolute lymphocytosis so coming to epidemiology this is the most common uh, leukemia as i told you the mean age at diagnosis is at around 60 years males are more commonly affected as compared to females SLL which is a non hodgkin lymphoma constitutes only around 4% of all non hodgkin lymphomas now the very important aspect of this session is understanding the pathogenesis of chronic lymphocytic leukemia chromosomal translocations as we saw in my earlier session in acute lymphoblastic lymphoma and so on in this case the chromosomal translocations are rare but the most common genetic abnormalities which you can find is deletion of the long arm of chromosome number 13 that's the most frequent deletion most frequent chromosomal abnormality you can encounter in cll the other important genetic abnormalities include deletion of 11q or short arm of chromosome number 17 and the trisomy of chromosome number 12 these are the common chromosomal abnormalities now why do we need to know this chromosomal abnormality the reason is that let us talk about the role of micro rnas in case of chronic lymphocytic leukemia okay so i told you there is deletion right the region which is deleted at chromosome number 13 which is a long arm of chromosome number 13 it encodes micro rna 15a and 16 okay so basically these micro rnas they act as tumor suppressors now if there is deletion which means the tumor suppressor action is reduced their loss in results in bcl2 over expression right and we know that bcl2 is a anti apoptotic protein right so once there is bcl2 over expression what happens the thing which happens is there is two little apoptosis and too many lymphocytes which means the cells are not going to die right that means to say that you have lots and lots of proliferation of lymphocytes too much lymphocytes in a given patient because of bcl2 over expression so that is one of the important pathogenetic mechanism of chronic lymphocytic leukemia second important one is somatic hypermutation status so we all know that somatic hypermutation is basically a kind of uh, a mutation which occurs in the germinal center b cells some of these chronic lymphocytic leukemias are small lymphocytic lymphomas they show somatically hypermutated immunoglobulin genes okay now what do you, what do you mean by somatic hypermutation this is basically small changes in the immunoglobulin heavy chain variable regions which is meant to improve the antibody affinity this is normal which occurs in the germinal center cells okay so when you see this somatic hypermutation status it is indicative that the origin of these cells are from the post germinal center memory b cells so when you don't see this somatic hypermutation which means that the lymphocytic lymphoma is of 
naive basal origin. So when you don't see this somatic hypermutation, that or these cases behave more aggressively than those patients who have somatic hypermutation, right? The third important uh, abnormality which you encounter is notch 1 and RNA splicing mutations. Okay, 10 to 18 percent of cases of small lymphocytic lymphoma, they have notch 1 gain of function mutations. When you see this gain of function mutation, it is associated with poor prognosis. That's very, very important to note that presence of notch 1 mutation is associated with poor prognosis. Also common apart from the other mutations which we discussed is genes regulating RNA splicing. These can also be mutated in the case of CLL. So to summarize, let us quickly see what are all the genetic abnormalities which we can see in CLL. Firstly, I told you the most common one being the deletion of the long arm of chromosome number 13. Okay, what does that do? That results in decrease in micro RNAs which ultimately results in increase in the BCL2 protein basically reducing the apoptosis and increasing the number of small lymphocytes, right? Number of proliferating lymphocytes. Second important abnormality is if you see unmutated immunoglobulin gene, okay, what is that unmutated means? That means they do not have somatic hypermutation, which is linked to increased aggressiveness. The third one is mutated immunoglobulin genes. Mutated meaning somatic hypermutation. Okay, that indicates that this particular leukemia is arising from memory B cells. It has a good prognosis compared to that of one which has unmutated ones. Next, you have notch one gene mutation, increased proliferation, poor prognosis. And lastly, you also have RNA splicing gene mutations. That is about the genetic landscape of small lymphocytic lymphoma or chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Now, once we have the mutations, let us see how the tumor grows. What is that which assists in the tumor growth? That means we need to look into the tumor microenvironment and the proliferation centers. The growth of chronic lymphocytic leukemia is confined predominantly in the proliferation centers in the lymph node. Why? These are the centers which provide critical microenvironmental support. What do we mean by that? They have stromal cells and the stromal cells secrete nuclear factor kappa beta which promotes survival. It also activates MYC protein which promotes growth. So these are the two important you know, components released by the stromal cells which help in proliferation of these tumor cells. Okay? Now, another important way the tumor grows is through B cell receptor signaling pathway. Very important. Note that B cell receptor signaling pathway, which means the key pathway is BTK pathway. What is this BTK pathway? It is Bruton tyrosine kinase pathway, which is the one which activates the downstream signaling pathways. The cell proliferates, right? Why do we need to know this? Because it is known that, very importantly, the BTK inhibit, inhibitors like ibrutinib, they block BCR signaling, B cell receptor pathway signaling, okay, which means they produce sustained therapeutic responses. So, which basically validates the role of BTK in the pathogenesis of chronic lymphocytic leukemia, right. So, that's all about how the tumor grows because of various mutations which we saw, right. Coming to the morphology of chronic lymphocytic leukemia, peripheral smear, classical picture, it's flooded with small lymphocytes with condensed cytoplasm, condensed chromatin and a very scant cytoplasm. And the most important clues to say that chronic lymphocytic leukemia is the presence of smart cells. These are also called basket cells, okay. These are disrupted tumor cells. That's a very characteristic finding, not necessarily all the cases where you find smart cells, it is CLL or SLL, right. You find predominantly smart cells in case of chronic lymphocytic leukemia, but it does not necessarily mean every time you see a smart cell, you should not think of chronic lymphocytic leukemia. That's one important thing you need to understand because these are the cells which are uh, disrupted tumor cells. They are very fragile cells. In the process of preparation of peripheral smear, these fragile cells, these fragile nuclei, they get crushed in the process of preparation and that's why they are called as smudge cells. 
okay that's an illustration of CLL you find small lymphocytes and write too many smart cells here and there that's all about illustrating chronic lymphocytic leukemia if it is a SLL small lymphocytic lymphoma when you examine the lymph node, what do you see? You see there is diffuse effacement of the lymph node. You don't find cortex and medulla. Okay, there is diffuse effacement, and this diffuse effacement is predominantly by the small lymphocytes. Okay, see the larger activated lymphocytes that often gather in loose aggregates, and these are known as proliferation centers. That's another feature which you find in the biopsy of the lymph node in case of small lymphocytic lymphoma. Now, immunophenotyping confirms the diagnosis. Tumor cells express the pan B cell markers. What are they? CD19 and CD20. These are pan B cell mar markers which are expressed in CLL. Also, you can see the expression of CD23 and CD5. Sometimes there will be low level expression of surface immunoglobulin, usually IgM, but can also be IgD. Okay, it is predominantly IgM, it can be IgG or IgT there can be high level expression of BCL2, okay. So, this is what you find in immunophenotyping of chronic lymphocytic leukemia or a small lymphocytic lymphoma. Now, how do these patients manifest or present? The clinical features include most often these patients are asymptomatic at diagnosis. If at all there are symptoms, they manifest with easy fatigability, weight loss and anorexia okay generalized lymphadenopathy and hepatospinomegaly are seen in around 50 to 60 percent of cases okay now it is also known that though you have lots and lots of lymphocytes okay there is disruption of normal immune function just because you find so many immune cells that doesn't mean that he is immunologically competent or active there is a disruption of normal immune function the mechanism of such disrupt disruption is not really known so what are the disruptions because of hypogamma globulinemia okay these patients are having increased susceptibility to infections particularly bacterial infections second important one the auto antibodies which are made by the neoplastic which are made by the non-neoplastic B cells, they can result in hemolytic anemia or thrombocytopenia, which is seen in around 10 to 15 percent of cases of chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Staging, how do you stage chronic lymphocytic leukemia? There are two important staging systems. One is the RAI classification, another is the BINET classification. This RAI classification is you know, used in United States, whereas Binary classification is in European countries, okay. So, right classification has stages 0 to 4, whereas binary classification has only three stages, stage A, B and C. Now, let us see these stages. In case of right classification, the stage 0, what do you mean by that? Which means there is absolute lymphocytosis of more than 10,000 per cubic mm, okay, or more than 30 percent of the lymphocytes in the bone marrow that is stage 0. Now, what is stage 1? Stage 1 is stage 0 plus lymphadenopathy okay that is stage 1. What is stage 2? Stage 0 plus liver enlargement or spleen enlargement hepatomegaly or splenomegaly. Stage 3 is stage 0 plus anemia anemia with hemoglobin less than 11 grams per deciliter that is stage 3 and stage 4 is stage 0 plus thrombocytopenia which means the platelet count less than 1 lakh per cubic mm of blood okay so that is stage 4 remember this particular stage particularly the stage 3 and stage 4 is basically because of the bone marrow infiltration of the tumor cells okay when you have bone marrow infiltration of tumor cells it suppresses erythropoiesis it suppresses megakaryocytic proliferation as well. That's why you have anemia, that's why you have thrombocytopenia. The stage 3 and stage 4 are the advanced stages in the case of chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Now moving on to the second important classification system of staging which is binet classification. Stage A has absolute lymphocytosis of more than 10,000 and more than 30 percent lymphocytes in the bone marrow which is what we saw in right classification as well right hemoglobin is more than 10 gram per deciliter platelets more than 1 lakh per 
cubic mm of blood and less than two involved sites. If the lymph nodes are involved, remember it is less than two sites should be involved. Now, what are the lymph node sites which are involved? The cervical, the axillary, the inguinal lymph nodes or hepato and splenomegaly. Any of these, if there is less than two, it is stage A. What is stage B then? Stage B is just like stage A, which includes three to five involved sites. Up to two is stage A, three to five is stage B, whereas stage C, anything which is seen in stage A or stage B, but the hemoglobin is less than 10, platelets is less than one lakh. So that is simplified classification, which is the binary classification. So remember, there are two important classification systems, the RI staging and the binary staging in case of chronic lymphocytic leukemia. How do you treat CLL? It's still evolving. There are lots of treatment modalities tried. BCL2 inhibitors have been tried. They can also be treated with anti-CD20 antibodies. They can also be treated with BTK inhibitors. We have seen why these things help, right? We have talked about all these things when I, am when I had discussed about the pathogenesis, right? So BCL2 inhibitors, anti-CD20 antibodies and BTK inhibitors. Course of the disease, it is usually variable. The median approximate survival is around 10 years. The chronic lymphocytic leukemia has a worse prognosis when the stage is very high, stage 3 or 4 in case of RI or stage C in case of binet. When there is a deletion of 11Q and 17P, which basically involves they are involving the TP53 gene, if there is a lack of somatic hypermutation, which we saw why, if there is a notch 1 mutation and lastly, more importantly, if you find there, if there is an expression of ZAP70, which is a protein which augments signals, which is produced by the immunoglobulin receptor. If you find this particular expression, that means these patients have a bad prognosis or even worse prognosis. Very rarely or sometimes the chronic lymphocytic leukemia can progress or can transform into a more aggressive behavior and that is called as Richard syndrome. Now, what is this Richard syndrome? It is the transformation of the SLL, small lymphocytic lymphoma into a diffuse large B cell lymphoma. It can occur in around 10 to 15 percent of, sorry, 5 to 10 percent of cases. Why does this occur? Basically, there could be some more mutations predominantly involving the TP53 or MYC gene. It is said to be an ominous event where there will be development of a rapidly enlarging mass within a lymph node or within a spleen. Okay, That means you should suspect that this patient might be going in for a richer syndrome or transformation which has a very poor prognosis. So that is all about chronic lymphocytic leukemia. We have looked into the epidemiology, we have looked into the pathogenesis, the morphology, clinical features, staging systems, remember very important staging systems and a bit about treatment and prognosis of chronic lymphocytic leukemia. With this, I have completed all the WBC neoplasms. We have discussed the whole lot of white blood cell neoplasms including acute myeloid leukemia, chronic myeloid leukemia, acute lymphoblastic leukemia and chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.